Hello and welcome to Psychgeist, where we talk about the psychology of the era, the science of games. I am your host, Dr. Rachel Cowart, and on today's episode of Academic Ramblings, we're going to talk about essential readings for game study. Think of it as your virtual syllabus for Game Studies 101. Now, I want to specify that these choices are very much housed within the psychology of game studies, and more specifically, media effects, the way that video games impact us physically, socially, and psychologically. I specify this because game studies is a huge area of study and it crosses many disciplines, psychology, anthropology, computer science, humanities, media studies. It's very interdisciplinary. For me, and perhaps this is obvious, but the psychology of games has always been most interesting. There are other books housed generally within the psychology of games that I would also consider essential that are not on this list. Things like Woke Gaming and Gaming on the Edge and like every book by Ian Bogost. The reason that these books didn't make the list is because what I'm talking about today are the five books that I think will give you a foundational knowledge upon which you can seek out other books and other articles that go into your particular area of interest, whether it be video games in my lens or games and learning. Okay, now that my disclaimers are over, here are my top five books that I consider essential for those wanting to study the psychology of games. All of these books are equally relevant and important for those who are new to the field or those who have been in it for more than a decade, like myself. There's always something to learn. First up, we have Getting Gamers by Jamie Madigan. Getting Gamers, the psychology of games and the impact on the people who play them is from Jamie Madigan. It was published in 2015. Dr. Madigan is an organizational psychologist, which I think gives his work a particularly interesting viewpoint. As a side note, he also hosts a fantastic podcast called The Psychology of Games, which I highly recommend. This book isn't so much focused on media effects, but more gaming and gaming communities. There's a lot of emphasis on motivation, the motivation to play, the motivation to grind, why we all want those achievement badges, the motivation to be part of a gaming community, and why we spend money on loot boxes and in-app purchases. This is the organizational psychology at play. Jamie's writing is also delightful. He is a wonderful storyteller and I genuinely love everything he writes. It's easy to read and it doesn't read like a dense academic book, but rather like you're sitting in Jamie's living room and he's just having a chat with you. Next up, Lost in a Good Game by Pete Eccles. I love this book. This book changed me in all the right ways. Lost in a Good Game, Why We Play Video Games and What They Do to Us was published by Pete Eccles in 2019. This book is half autobiography, half psychology and game. The book touches a lot on the history and development of video games, which is truly fascinating, and some media effects, but at the heart of it, it's really about our relationships with games why we love them, why sometimes we hate them, and why for a whole lot of us, they're part of who we are. It does read more like a memoir than a science book, and a lot of it circles around grief, so be prepared for that. But it's beautiful and poignant, and my words do not do it justice. It is a must read. Next, The Psychology of Video Games by Celia Hoden. The Psychology of Video Games is a brand new book. It came out in 2020 from Celia Hoden and is part of the Psychology of Everything series from Routledge. This book is a fantastic short overview of, well, the psychology of video games. What I really love about it and why it makes such an important addition to this list is it's the first book I'm talking about that talks about game design. It talks about the structure of game design, it talks a lot about user research and how that plays into the psychology of play and why, after decades of playing games, we still enjoy them. Dr. Hoden does a great job from the very beginning explaining basic psychology terms like working memory and motivation. And honestly, reading it was kind of like a warm hug from the supervisor I wish I always had. It's thoughtful and well-written and easy to follow. And like I said, it's a really great to have in that 101 toolkit, especially for concepts related to game design. Next up, The Video Game Debate, edited by Dr. Rachel Coward and Dr. Torsten Quant. To be honest, I did not want to include any of my books on this list, but there really is not an equivalent volume. This book was brainstormed at an academic retreat back in 2014. And yes, academic retreats are things that sometimes people do, although I think maybe only European universities do it. I could be wrong, but I've only ever experienced in Europe, and it's where you take your whole research lab and you go someplace like a castle really. Um, and you sit and you, and you brainstorm for a couple of days and it's really wonderful. And the idea is that new original ideas will come out of it. 
which this book did. The idea behind this book is that we study a lot of things about games and media effects. There's a lot of different areas of interest. There's video games and violence, there's games and learning, games and social outcomes, games and social communities. It runs the gamut. But if you're interested in learning more about any of these particular areas of interest, you really have to seek out dozens of different individual research articles. So this idea that was born on this retreat between myself and Professor Quant was a book that summarized the major debates in game studies relating to media effects. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a book that you could pick up and read chapters by experts in each particular field about what the general state of the research says, and that is what this book is. This is the book I wish I had when I was starting to study games. So the video game debate was published in 2015. It's a series of essays written by experts in each particular field. It covers all the major topics in game studies. Following up from this, the video game debate two was released at the end of 2020. This isn't so much an update of the original book, although the beginning of the book does update and talk about different changes that we've seen in things related to like video game addiction, for instance, but it tackles new debates that have emerged over the last five years. Talks about loot boxes and serious games and games in therapy. So these two books highly recommend. It's a great overview if you just wanna know what does the state of the research say about how games are related to violence or how games are related to social outcomes. Last but not least, Discovering Statistics by Andy Field. Discovering Statistics? Yes, Discovering Statistics. Now hear me out. If you wanna be able to sift through the good from the bad, from the, oh my God, how did that get published? You need to have a basic understanding of statistics. Even if you come from a field where statistics is not heavily focused on. Andy Field is a wonderfully funny writer that makes statistics accessible and relatable. I've been working with data for many years now and I still go back and reference this book. Now there's probably a new version out by now. This is the actual book I use during my PhD, but either way there's quality information here. And if you're someone who's teaching statistics and you aren't using an Andy Field book, you are doing your students a disservice. Okay, I have to throw in a bonus one. I know I said five, but for all my clinicians out there, I have to mention a couple books published by Dr. Anthony Bean. He's the leading author when it comes to talking about games in therapy and cultural competency around games for clinicians. There are two books worth mentioning here. Working with Games and Gamers in Therapy, which is a book specifically designed for clinicians to help them understand the role games play as a cultural competency in the 21st century, and Integrating Geek Culture into Therapeutic Practice, which is also edited by Dr. Emery Daniel Jr. and Sarah Hayes. If you are a clinician, these are must-haves, must-read. So I know this video is about games and psychology, but as some of you know, I have my master's in counseling psychology, so clinical work is always something that's been deep in my heart. There are two books that I read during my master's programs that significantly changed my life. And these two books, I think, are must-reads for anyone, not just those interested in game studies, not just those interested in psychology, but those interested about learning a bit more about themselves. The first is Viktor Frankl's Will to Meaning. The book focuses on Viktor's experiences in concentration camps during World War II and how these experiences changed his life outlook to find meaning even in the direst of circumstances. It's a short read, but incredibly powerful. The other is Getting the Love You Want by Harville Hendricks. This book will make you question all the relationships you've ever had in a good way, I promise. Truly eye-opening. All right, returning to game studies. I did pose this question on Twitter and Facebook. What would you consider the essential book for game studies if you could only pick one? And I wanted to share some of those suggestions here. So here they are. All right, that's enough books to add to your wish list for now. Do you have an essential book you'd like to recommend that wasn't mentioned here? Please post below. If you like this video and want to see more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, be excellent to each other and always cite your sources.